Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this online training certification video. This video is Isonus Peer IP installation and wiring. Our course objectives are cover the typical installation tools needed for installing a Peer IP device, cover the basics of wiring devices to a Peer IP device, and cover several different wiring scenarios. So, our installation overview. The install tools are pretty similar to the RCO3. We're still going to want dielectric grease and silicone and the other items that we use for the RCO3 and IP bridge installs. The RCO4 does have a back plate that the reader mounts to. So this will screw onto a single gang junction box. The RCO4 will then slide onto the plate and there's a set screw on the bottom that you will then screw in to ensure the reader doesn't go anywhere. The RJ45 does require a 1 inch hole for installation, so if you're not mounting this directly to a back box, you will need to drill a minimum of a 1 inch hole to get that RJ45 connector through. All the settings for the RCO4 are done via software. Again, don't forget your dielectric grease and silicon for outdoor units. Just because the RJ45 is on a longer whip now to get it away from the back of the reader controller doesn't mean that it's not exposed to the elements anymore. Moisture will always find a way in there, so make sure your dielectric grease is put on the terminals. So if you remember from the previous module, the Pure IP pigtail has been simplified. Our red and black will go directly to our lock if we're not using an EDK. And our orange and black is our static 12 volt DC for request to exit motions and other peripheral devices out at the door. Our two inputs are pretty much the same as the RCO3, except our brown is now our signal common. So green is request to exit or auxiliary, which basically do the same thing at the reader controller. They're just called something differently in the software. Blue is our door sensor. The EDK, yellow and white wires are our communication. The EDK will also need 12 volt DC power, either from the orange and the black on the reader controller if you're powering it by PoE, or from another 12 volt DC power source. From our previous module, remember the RCO4 has a solid state relay. The maximum output on this relay is 600 milliamps at 12 volt DC, regardless of the power method. So if I power this by a 2 amp 12 volt DC power supply, that output on board will only ever supply up to 600 milliamps out. So for 24 volt DC or anything above 600 milliamps, we will need an Isonus exterior door kit or EDK. Alternatively, you can use an Electronix RBSN if needed. The door sense input still requires a normally closed circuit, just like the RCO3 and the IP bridge. The REX AUX input requires a normally open circuit, which is combined and can be chosen in the software, whether you want it to show up as REX or AUX. For example, if you connect an intercom to that input, you may want it to show up as auxiliary input instead of REX input. Let's take a minute to talk about PoE and fail-safe locks. Isonus devices can power a lock when powered by PoE. Since fail-safe locks require power, removing PoE will unlock the door. The best way to resolve this issue is to isolate the power on the inside of the door with a PoE or PoE Plus splitter or a power supply. Then add the additional security by using the Isonus exterior door kit or EDK. Make sure whatever power source that you're using has a battery backup or UPS. So if you do want to power this fail-safe lock by PoE directly from the reader controller, make sure that your switch is plugged into a UPS or there's some type of battery backup for that. Now let's take a look at some different wiring scenarios. Take a look at a standard RCO4 just connected directly to an electric strike. On the RCO4, the red and the black wires are directly connecting to the electric lock. Remember, this is access control, so instead of red and black being a power output, red and black will logically be connected to the electric lock. Remember that an electric strike does need our back EMF diode assembly, which comes with the RCO4. Also, isolate and insulate any wires not used. You don't want that green wire bouncing around and perhaps unlocking the door or being shorted to ground, or any of those other wires causing issue with your installation. So just take some electrical tape, cut off any bare metal, and tape those out of the way. Now take a look at a reader controller with an electric strike and peripherals. 
So again, our red and black will be tied directly to the electric strike through our back EMF diode assembly. The request to exit motion requires 12 volt DC power. So we can see our orange and black connected to the REX motion, which is our static 12 volt DC output. Now to tie on the blue and green circuit wires. So blue will go to one side of the door contact. Brown, which is the circuit return, will go to the other side of the door contact. That is a normally closed circuit. The request to exit motion is a normally open circuit. So the green wire will tie to the normally open side of the relay and the common will tie to the brown wire. If we remember from previous modules, the RCO4 has a solid state relay output. So if we need a dry relay contact to go to electrified exit hardware power supply, or we have 24 volt DC locks, or we have anything going over 600 milliamps, we will need an Isonus exterior door kit or an Electronics RBSN, which we'll talk about in the next slide. We can see the connections here to the reader controller, similar to the RCO3. Orange and black are our static 12 volt DC power. Yellow and white is gonna be our communication to send that secure signal to the EDK to tell the EDK to unlock the door. Again, we can use an Electronics RBSN in lieu of the EDK. Please note that the RBSN is not a direct replacement for an EDK. For enhanced security, please use the Isonus exterior door kit. The RBSN is just looking for either voltage being present or voltage being absent. When voltage is present, it changes the state of the relays on the RBSN. The EDK looks for a secure signal. So here we can see that the RBSN is connected to the red and black wires off the reader controller. And then we would tie our lock on either to the normally open side for a fail secure lock or to the normally closed side for a fail safe lock. Of course, the common will tie to either a power supply positive terminal or to our input common on a, another power supply that may trigger some electrified exit hardware. So this wiring diagram shows everything connected using an EDK with an external power supply for a 12 or a 24 volt DC lock. One thing to note is the EDK comes with a factory jumper from our positive voltage to our comm meaning that it will pass voltage from its input source over to the lock. In this case, we're using an external power supply, so we just want to remove that little jumper. We'll tie the positive side onto the common of the EDK lock relay, come out of the normally open side to our fail secure electric strike, and finally return the common electric strike to the common of the power supply utilizing our back EMF diode. Of course, if you were connecting a fail safe lock like a magnetic lock, you would simply tie the magnetic lock to the normally closed side utilizing your inrush suppressor, which we'll see in one of the next slides. And then we'll tie on our normally closed door contact and our normally open request to exit motion. Now let's take a look at securing a magnetic lock. This is the most secure method using a PoE plus splitter and an Isonus EDK. So our PoE plus splitter will be installed at the door going back over a cat 5 ear cat 6 to our PoE plus switch or mid-span. It will then split off the ethernet to the reader controller and give us 12 volt DC positive and negative terminals which will come on an orange and black of the reader controller to provide power to the reader controller itself. So the next thing we'll wire in is our EDK. Again it needs 12 volt DC static power coming off the orange and the black and then yellow and white will be the communication to the EDK. In this wiring scenario, we're wiring the lock power through an exit button such as a Securitron EEB2. We do this because we need a fail-safe method to exit out that door regardless of whatever state the reader controller is in. For example, your request to exit motion could perhaps fail. Your request to exit input could become locked up or for whatever reason, in an emergency, people need a fail-safe method to exit out that door in case the RAX input fails or the RAX device fails. Hitting the exit button on the EEB2 will give you 30 seconds to egress out that door regardless of the state of the reader controller or the relay or anything else in there. That's why we wire the power through the lock circuit such as in this diagram. Here we can see our inrush suppressor installed as close to the lock as possible, going to our magnetic lock, and finally completing the circuit to the common of the EDK. 
Then we wire in our normally closed door contact and our request to exit motion, just like we did in the other wiring diagrams. So let's review our course objectives. We covered the typical installation tools needed for installing a PRIP device. These installation tools are similar to the RCO3 and the IP bridge. We covered the basics of wiring devices to a PRIP device. And we covered several different wiring scenarios. All these wiring diagrams can be found on our website for easy reference. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training video and have a fantastic day.